Hey everybody. So right now me and my mix are walking around doing this thing. Yeah, he's gonna poop. Anyways, um Yeah, I was feeling really sick yesterday. I'm feeling great today. I feel really good. I feel like um Han Solo. I'm I'm feeling fast food today. I have either eaten in or um, we grilled out the other day and I want fast food. I haven't had fast food. Come on, let's go inside. Can you see me? Oh, yeah, okay, I don't know. Oh, yeah, you can see me. So yesterday I had to, uh, I had to pay my, uh, my citation for my ticket. I didn't record it. My, I left my camera at the house. I had to pay that all one hundred and fifteen dollars. Yeah, thank you, city of Middletown. I'm really happy that I got to uh, help this great city during its harsh economic times. In a way right now, I'm referencing a Wheezy Waiter video. I don't know if anyone remembers it, but it's one of my favorites. And I tell him it every time I talk to him. I really don't think he cares. Oh, look, more cones, woo! Ow, ow, ow. So uh, yeah, tonight, Mitchell's coming home. I'm gonna go pick him up. So I'm trying to get over there, and there's all these cones. I'm ready for doing that to turn right to go to Wendy's! Today, the video I'm recording today is gonna go up on Friday, so I'm going to do a top five of my favorite stand-up comedians, because I miss doing top fives. <laughs> Richard Pryor. I think he is quite funny, and I th he's more, um, like, uh, he has more, like, historic value than, like, I mean, you know, he was one of the first to really, like, kind of break the ice of being, like, I don't know. He was just really extreme, and it was hilarious. And uh, he was the first to do that. And lots of props go to to Richard Pryor for that. Number four is Ricky Gervais. Yeah, that's right. The guy who created The Office. I mean, I love him for that. But I mean, his stand-up. Well, I've only seen the one. I don't know how much, how much he's done, but it was it was perfect. It was everything I was looking for. I just haven't seen all, like a lot of his stuff, and he probably doesn't do like a ton of stand-up because you know he's busy, you know, being rich. Number three is Eddie Murphy. Just as a kid growing up, he was one of the first stand-up comedians I watched, and uh, which is funny. I say as a kid growing up, and I was, but it's just funny because um, probably shouldn't have been watching it for my age. Eddie Murphy Raw is probably the, one of the greatest stand-ups I, I mean ever. It just sucks that uh, he does those those one movies now where they're not funny. How would you like to say one of our new gardens today? Uh, no, thank you. I would like to. So yeah, honorable mention. That is a uh, yeah, honorable mention. Seven eighty-seven. mention. That probably goes to Robin Williams. Some of the things he says during the stand-up is, I mean, it makes me really laugh out loud, like hard, like, like my stomach hurts laughing. But then there's some of it that's just not funny, and it, you can tell it's trying to be funny, it's just not funny, and it bothers me, and I don't like that. Number two is Steve Martin. I love Steve Martin, and, and almost everything he's ever done. I even didn't hate that Cheaper by the Dozen movie. Oh. Anywho, not only his stand-up, but his movies are amazing. If I do anything planned out and it and it's comedy related, it's, I, I, I mean, it, it's probably evolved in some way from Steve, I, just he like, I don't know, it was actually a big inspiration for me to like try to make people laugh all the time. And number one is George Carlin. What can you say about dude, George Carlin? He is the ideal stand-up comedian. He doesn't even like, he didn't make a ton of movies. Like his career was based in stand-up comedy and he, and he did it a lot. And he, he was always, he always sold out huge arenas and, and theaters. I mean, he was, up until he died, he, he was always, you know, I guess the word would be pushing the envelope. He did 
all types of comedy. He did physical, he did um, political, he did like this wacky kind of comedy. I think he's at uh, the top of the list for almost everyone for stand-up comedians. That a boy. Now get ready to go Mitchell, and uh, I looked down at the clock, and I, I uh, realized I arrived way too early. Um, yeah, it's only the first time I'm actually early to an airport, and I don't need to be. What is this? No, right now um, I'm waiting for Mitchell. You see, he has this habit of telling me, um, giving me information about flights and stuff, and uh, he's always wrong, again. So right now, I've just decided that I'm gonna walk around this airport since I never really got a chance to. I found out it, uh, like last year, Lionsgate Productions uh, bought the rights to it, and it's gonna be made into a movie. And so far, the lead candidates are, um, for the main character is the, the hit girl, from Kikas, she's the lead candidate for the main actress. And for director, they have three different guys. One guy who directed Eclipse, and I don't—I think he's directed someone else. I can't remember, but I mean, hey, whatever. But the other two guys, one of them directed Sea Biscuit, which is a fantastically directed movie, and the other one directed what did he direct? I feel like I'm gonna get raped in this tunnel. Like, it, <laughs> but. The other one directed um, American Beauty, one of my favorite movies. And it's like, it's perfect. I think he'd be perfect for the role, to be honest. Is that a half pipe? I think that's a half pipe. I hear birds, but it's nighttime. Which leads me to believe those are bats. It's cool, it's cool, it's cool. You only told me that your flight landed at 11.15. Who did? You did. What time is it now? It is 11. 50. Right on time. <laughs> How you doing? That's good. Hey, everyone wanted a hug last time. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't say I'd give it to you. Mm, <laughs> dude, I feel like I've been gone for a while. You have. Well, you have, you've been in Ohio in the past, like, talk. you've been in Ohio the past, like, like, two weeks for about three days. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Your haircut makes you look slender. Really? Yeah. I like it. I got it all chopped off, man. Because he was like, he was like, Okay, this is kind of what happened. He's like, don't let this person cut your hair, okay? Just go with, uh, like, her name was Cheryl or whatever. I go there. The girl looks at my hair and goes, I'm not cutting your hair. And I was like, oh, okay. She's like, I just have a feeling I messed it up. And then one guy that he said, don't let it cut it, cuts it. It does an amazing job. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, Dolby, you, you got to trust this guy. You are incorrect. It's pretty crazy.